kind of like cutting off the circulation of his face. Hey, what's up you guys? Shardimus Prime here doing another Marvel Legends action figure review on Marvel's Fantastic Four's Invisible Woman. I gotta give a big thanks to the Madness 1984 for leading me in the direction to picking this up. I'm not gonna give uh, details as far as how you can get this. It will be released soon. I believe this is going to be a Walgreens exclusive. So I'm very excited about this figure right here. This is actually really big news for us that have been familiar with the politics between Marvel and Fox and the ownership and the rights and everything and you know for a long time we have not seen any Fantastic Four figures from Hasbro and now we're getting a Fantastic Four Invisible Woman. I am very excited. Anyway on the side of the packaging we can see some very nice beautiful art. It looks like Diodato's artwork. I'm not sure about that but I like it. And then on the very back you see the product. There's Herbie right over there. There's a read-up. If you want to read it pause it now. And then on this side you can see the same image and then we get that glorious four right there on the top. Then you can see the form the inside of the packaging too. All right, let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's Invisible Woman along with Herbie out of the packaging. And Hasbro has given us a gorgeous Invisible Woman figure. I absolutely love this piece. It is my favorite comic version Invisible Woman in my Marvel Legends collection now. They just killed it. We also get Herbie over here looking very cool. I would have preferred some invisibility effects instead of having the Herbie, but you know, uh, you know, they, at least they included Herbie, and it's not just the Invisible woman but she does come with interchangeable parts which I think is pretty neat but at the same time I wish we'd gotten more interchangeable parts we do not get an opaque right arm at all for this figure so I would have liked to have that but anyway let's take a closer look at Herbie and then we'll take a closer look at Sue Storm what Hasbro's done here is not bad you get these nice sculpted eyes and the mouth looks really good I love how it's sculpted on there and the paint is very clean I do like the pearlescent white you can see it's very shimmery so it looks very good and very nice sculpt throughout on it so they didn't do a bad job. It's just, you know, this character is just extremely disappointing for me because when I was a kid, I remember I would go back and I'd rent a bunch of the, uh, you know, the old TV shows and the old Marvel movies and stuff like that. And when I saw this guy instead of Human Torch, I was like, what? What the hell? Why is he dead? Or what? It was just confusing. But yeah, I think JC uh, explained it in one of his videos recently that this character uh, was developed for the cartoon so that kids wouldn't light themselves on fire. Yep. Anyway, he has this receptacle right over here and... Uh, that's right above the culo, and oh, actually, that's a real culo right there. He does come with this clear stand, which I really like. It does work out very well having him stand on it, so, you know, it looks pretty clean. Anyway, here's a comparison with the Herbie that we'd gotten from the Toy Biz 4-pack. That's the Marvel Universe, Herbie! They're not anywhere near the same scale, Shardimus! This one has this nice, shiny silver with blue spray paint on top of it, which looks really nice, and you can tell the colors are very different. And to briefly go over Herbie's articulation, his head is on a ball joint. So you can pivot the head right over here and it will turn side to side and look down and up that much And you could of course rotate him on his little stand right here and to measure him out while on the stand You could see he's just a little over five and a half inches tall and I guess just the figure all on its own uh, Just right at three inches just being hundred percent honest here I think Hasbro should pat themselves on the back for delivering on such a beautiful Sue Storm action figure This thing is just Gorgeous. She's pretty. It's a very beautiful looking action figure, man. I think it's great. I love the paint over here. The flesh tone looks awesome. I really like that red paint over her mouth and you get some little bits of pink underneath there. The eye paint came out great. They're both centered. The eyebrows look really good. I really like how the hair came out too. Get a little bit of shadowing effect with the blonde and everything. You can see a little bit of brown mixed in there with the yellow. Looks really nice. I really like the sculpt a lot too. Very well made, just really well done. I mean, you get the little bit of a seam right there, but come on, man, that's not really too bad. I mean, it's a very beautiful Sue Storm. I'm really digging it a lot. I do have a complaint, and that is that it resembles this Enchantress figure a lot more than I would like it to. And I've made this complaint before where I feel like Hasbro has like a head sculpt, and then they just changed it a little bit here and there, and it kind of comes off as a person in cosplay. I don't know who this woman is, I think she's beautiful, but it's the same woman in cosplay. I mean, doesn't that look like the same person? Come on, let me know what you think in the comments below. But, you know, this one has a slight smirk, this one doesn't. They look a little different, but to me, I see the same person. 
it really looks like the same person to me. I mean, both beautiful figures, but yeah. So a little bit more variety in the face sculpts would be great. But not like this, though. This, this is got awful. I, I believe this is our very last uh, Sue Storm figure that we've gotten from Hasbro since we've just gotten this one right here, which is not technically out yet. So she's not available at retail. Um, but yeah, so this thing is hideous, and this is a huge improvement compared to this one over here. Now looking at the rest of the figure, I really dig it a lot. I love how we get the black, and we get that green gray and white in there for the Fantastic Four emblem right there on her chest. I think it looks really good. And we get the translucent right arm, which I dig. Uh, again, I wish we'd gotten an opaque right arm, you know, it's same kind of deal with the Sandman. It would be nice to have these in their relaxed state and everything, but you know, it looks pretty good. I like how you can still see some of the black over her hand as she has black gloves, but it kind of doesn't make sense because it's like, okay, it's fading to invisible and then comes back and then goes back to invisible again. It kind of doesn't make sense, but I still appreciate it. And then on this side, we have the Mr. Fantastic stick holding hand looking pretty good. And you could swap that out and port in her invisibility effect for her left hand looking pretty nice as well. So you could see it fading away towards the tips of her fingers. Uh, this little pinky looks broken. I mean, like, not the plastic, but like, if it was a real person, that's a broken pinky, I think. But I could just heat that up, straighten that out. So it looks pretty good. I like how that effect came out. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, as far as the blue goes, we don't get any shadowing effect on the blue at all. But, you know, I do like the color blue that they have for this, and I do like how the paint came out. You know, it's very clean. We've seen this body mold again with the Kate Bishop Hawkeye figure, which I really like. And I think they just added this peg hole in the back right there, because looking at the Kate Bishop figure, you could tell, like, the you know, looking at the wrinkles right here under the armpit and everything, it's the same mold and everything, of course, you know, looking at the shape of it. But she does not have the peg hole on her back, and this one does. So I'm very happy that they've added that on there, but I think they may have added it before. I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, looking at the invisible nalgas, which aren't really invisible right now, I think they look great. Again, thank you, Kate Bishop. It was very, very nice. I like the thighs over here. The legs look good. Black paint looks pretty solid. So I'm pretty happy with that. And the feet look good, and she does have peg holes under her feet. I do like the articulation on this figure. You can get her head moving up a really good amount right there, especially with having all that hair back there. I'm very happy with that. What really helps is having that little shifting motion like the pile driver, right? Pile driver, still doing it, yep, since 2012. Anyway, you can move the head very far downward. That's great. And she will rotate her head side to side. And she does have head pivot. Does the head look a little on the big side to you? Uh, I'm just asking. I think it does just a little bit. Just a tiny tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Anyway, uh, her shoulders do move outward all the way, and you can move them downward, they move forward. Uh, she can bend only once at the elbow, wishing, hoping one day we get double jointed elbows. She rotates at the elbow, and then both and all three wrists actually move up and down and rotate side to side. She has a diaphragm joint right here. You get a little bit of pivot, moves forward a little, moves back a little bit more so. She does have the hip joints that move outward that much, and she can kick forward that far and back only a tiny bit. She has an upper thigh cut, double jointed knees, and then the ankles move down, up, and she has ankle pivot. You can't see me. And then here's Invisible Woman at her widest stance possible with both feet still flat on the floor. Now to measure out this Invisible Woman figure, you can see that she is standing just a little under six and a half inches tall. And then here's Invisible Woman compared to the Kate Bishop figure. As you can see, they share the same body mold, and then also compared to the Enchantress. And again, they look like they're the same person, just in different cosplay outfits. And another thing I had mentioned earlier about the big head, yep, she definitely suffers from the BFH S because looking at the Enchantress compared to the Invisible Woman, Enchantress's head is actually smaller than Invisible Woman, but she's taller. So yeah, it is a little on the big side. What's with the big heads, Hasbro? And then for your Invisible Woman comparison, we have our new Hasbro version compared to the older Hasbro from the Toys R Us 2 pack. And this is actually a repaint from the Ronin Build-A-Figure Waves Invisible Woman, which I don't like either. I don't really like that suit so much. I liked this one more, but this one is still much worse than this figure. Even though it has some nice paint shading right there, I still like this figure a lot more. And then we have have the Toy Biz uh, Jessica Alba figure right there, which I like very much. It's actually my favorite Invisible Woman, actually the fully transparent one I like. Hopefully we get a fully transparent version of this one right here. And by the way, gotta give a big thanks to the lovely Charlita One for renting Mechanic Resurrection. I liked that movie very much because of the Jessica Alba. If you like the Jessica Alba like I do, you will enjoy that movie up until the first 25 minutes. Then to compare Invisible Woman to a couple other Fantastic Four figures, we have the two-pack Johnny Storm right over there, and then we have the Series 5 Mr. 
Mr. Fantastic from Toy Biz, and then we have The Thing, which is repainted. I think this was from a two-pack. Uh, now, none of the blues actually match this Invisible Woman right here. She does have a little bit more of a tealish hue to it, but I'm hoping to get more Fantastic Four figures from Hasbro. Cannot wait. And then comparing this Invisible Woman to your average size six-inch scale figure, here she is next to the Marvel Legends Big Time No Let Down Spider-Man, and you can see that she is a little on the tall side. I feel like she should be a little bit shorter than Spidey. And then here's Invisible Woman on a Mafex flight stand plugged right into her back, which I think looks great. I really like this figure a lot, man. Hasbro did an exceptional job with this one. I really dig it, and I cannot wait to get more Fantastic Four figures from Hasbro. We've been waiting for this for a very long time. And my complaints, I think, are very minor. You know, the whole cosplay thing, I think that's an overall issue that Hasbro needs to work on, or at least address, because I don't think they're even aware that they're, you know, just reusing the same face. But really, for the most part, Great job, Hasbro. I love this figure. I am very, very happy nonetheless. And I hope you guys are very happy with my review. If you are, please hit the like button. Leave a comment down below if you wish to do so. Subscribe if you want more Shardimus Prime videos coming your way. If you're already subscribed, make sure you hit that notification bell. If you want to see a photo gallery of images, it's over at MarvelousNews.com. And then I'm also selling my Mohawk on eBay. Yep, it's up on eBay. So if you want to check out that listing, help support me getting over to New York Toy Fair so I can report on the new figures coming out over there for you guys. Please check it out and I'll catch you guys later peace